别！啪啪啪啪！啊 ，Tim Allen. The apotheosis of 90s mediocrity. What isn't mediocre is this episode of JonTron. Good, good segue for me. Something I noticed about this episode is that there is no notable or memorable jokes. I don't know if anyone quotes this episode in particular, but, you know, this doesn't mean it's a bad episode. Because this might be just the comfiest episode of JonTron in the season. Well, as comfy as JonTron can get when it comes to stuff like this happening. <laughs> Looking back on other episodes, you would assume that I would bash this episode. I don't think it's too bad of an episode besides its, you know, rage faces. That's a problem. Get get out of here, Reddit. Go, go away. This video talks more about the game and cuts back on the jokes, which is a nice change of pace. So basically what you're doing here is going around and collecting scattered crates because they were too lazy to make a real game. There's like five or six or eighty on each level. Only problem is, you don't know where they are, so you gotta navigate this completely repetitive and mind-bending landscape to find them. And most of the time, you just end up running in circles all over the damn place. You can usually tell how blatantly terrible a game is gonna be if it's made like this. John realizes the most effective jokes are when he's on his camera, so this might be the progenitor to this. I didn't write anything after this, so... I think. On to the next one, I guess. Anyone else notice this bird can talk? What the fuck's that about, right? So, the Home Improvement episode wasn't jaw-droppingly good. It was pretty alright and was extremely consistent in quality. I don't know why, but I remember this episode being way better than it was before. Rewatching this, I realized it isn't that great of an episode. Some jokes hit, and some don't. I feel like John didn't have a good time making this episode in particular. You can feel the inconsistency in what the episode wants to be. It seemed John wanted it to be funny, but could only point out the clear, obvious absurdities within the game. But without that JonTron charm. Please don't pick on me. Yeah, well, no, I, I, I wasn't planning on it. Holy shit! Are, are you being serious with me right now? This guy's gonna go around opening with lines like, please don't pick on me, and then immediately jump on me like Bruce Willis in the midst of a bathroom emergency? I just think this episode feels off-putting in a way. Unless this was intentional, seeing as the game he is reviewing can suddenly be off-putting by its change of visuals and obnoxious difficulty. Hmm. Maybe John thematically designed this episode around this concept. If that's the case, then this might be the greatest episode of JonTron because of its artistic integrity and challenge. Jafari is truly the greatest auteur game reviewer of our time, breaking new boundaries with ideas unseen in internet videos. Let's just go ahead and look it up on YouTube. There we go. There we go. I did that. It was me. Can't say I'm not good at completing things. John, you couldn't finish a cheese dish. Hey Jacques, I keep you naked on purpose. Shit! Shit! Or John just can be a total dumbass. I think it's the latter in this case. What could possibly go wrong? Well, for one, John loses his intro here for some reason. I know this is an intro in his other, like, offshoot videos and one-offs, but whatever. And Rockington is now a canonical character in his universe. Off to a great start. I think he bought it, Rockington! In all seriousness, this episode is actually fantastic. I think most of the gags and jokes really work here. One of my favorite types of episodes from John is when he goes through multiple games. John doesn't have to linger on something for too long, which is really nice when he does it. Of course, this means whatever analytical parts John may have in any of these videos may be severely limited. I keep saying analytical because in this season there are a lot more of that than there is in any other JonTron videos. Oh look! An arrow! Aren't these game designers wonderful? Now how truly ironic! A game designer's job, in most cases, is to create a living world that ceases to be fake in the mind of the player. I mean, think about it. Even if the game constantly breaks the fourth wall like in Duke Nukem or Monkey Island, the world is still believable. Your suspension of belief kicks in and your mind allows you to meld with the game environment as if you were actually there. When a game like Bubsy 3D makes self-referential humor, it just seems foolish. Having the designers of this game refer to themselves as designers, something just feels wrong about it. John's entire focus is on comedy now, which is fine, but sometimes John can be good at being analytical and sincere about the games he plays. While I'm inquiring about that, let's think about this as well. Is John actually a game reviewer? Currently I would say he isn't, but earlier stuff is definitely game reviews because he still talked about the game design in some way. 
Most of season 2 and onward seem to suggest that he would stray away from this, which is fine I suppose. Although it's probably hard to try and get analytical about Bubsy in any way, and I guess John's comedic prowess highlights the absurdity and flaws with the game enough. So maybe I just answered my own question. Alright, well, don't watch the rest of this video, I'm stupid. Whoa, whoa, no, I, I was reviewing the game the whole time! Look! <laughs> John, that doesn't go in there, you silly bitch! <laughs> oh. Now all we gotta do is find a game for us to review. That'll do it. John returns to another bad GameCube game. Unlike last time, this episode is actually pretty great and one of my favorites. Unlike the Aquaman episode, all the jokes and gags seem to work. Something hilarious I notice when John reviews games that are critically panned, he only seems to play the first level of each game. Reflecting the apathy of the game developers is truly a symbolic act, John. I think this part perfectly sums up the entire episode. Fun little dance. That's it. That's all I can say about it. That's all I wrote. I didn't write it too much. Whatever. Get get off my back. Now this is another essential episode in all of John Tron's catalog. If you claim to be a fan of John Tron, then you've seen this episode. I really don't have too much to say about this episode besides, like, you have to see it for yourself. Jared the Completionist is in it. This episode is home to probably the most famous JonTron joke. Oh my god! I really can't say much more than that, then it's just great. I guess I can say that the video is being shot on a new camera? That's, that's new, that's neat. I give that a 10, a B plus. How else would you do it? Probably the biggest episode of the season so far, at least in terms of production value and size. John is a huge fan of Banjo-Kazooie, something easily recognizable between John and Jacques. Oh, hey Jacques, why are you green? Holy crap, a new Banjo-Kazooie game, Jacques! Let's go play this! Oh shit. This and Dino City Bro are the biggest episodes up to this point, and John brought his A-game with a comedy and structure. I feel his emotional attachment to Banjo-Kazooie as a series had a lot to do with the quality of this video. There's even CGI effects and what I think is custom music. Ah, what perfection. What a beautiful day, wouldn't you say, Rockington? Oh yeah, I, lo I lost Rockington. I, lo I lost a rock! The production quality really elevates this video to a new level not previously seen before in JonTron's catalog. Just look at the emotional death of Jacques. John. Stand back. The horrible realism reflected in John's eyes. John wanted to show the raw death of his sidekick and how he was holding John back. Look at this, John's not even phased. He just he just wants to play a video game. John's John's the real villain here. Seriously, this is one of the best episodes in the entire season. It's quite legendary and loved by JonTron fans, so uh, 10 dead birds out of 10. Ever just looked across a misty shoreline, gazed over beyond the horizon, and said to yourself, what if? There you go. Do you need further explanation? Do you need Claire? Do you mom? Do you need Claire? John reviews Birdemic, just like everyone else. Everyone has talked about this movie. It's, it's a bad indie movie. Here, I'll review it real quick. Birdemic, where are you? Is that you? Is that you, Birdemic? Oh, it's a tree branch. That ain't Birdemic. Where's Birdemic? Okay, this joke's up. Honestly, I can't bring myself to watch this review again because I decided to sit through the whole movie once and I went so hard my eyebrows sunk into my eye sockets. I'm just gonna put the best bits I can find while scanning through this. I I, I know I'm weak. I know I know I can't do it. And that, sir, is where we're going to install your solar panel. Let me lay this down for you. Hitchcock, Kubrick, Coppola, Nguyen. I take it back! Go back to when there weren't birds! Are these birds... dive bombing? Like 1940s kamikaze pilots? With... with... with plane sounds? 
this scene just shows up 40 minutes into the movie. What? Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Rock Bottom. Shit, here they come. So there you have it. The best worst movie ever. Oh my god! What's that? Get that out Before I even get to the three last episodes of this season, we have to bring up that this happened. Hey, I'm Grump! I'm not so Grump! And we're the Game Grumps! Remember this? Yeah, John and Aaron did a Let's Play show. Didn't really pan out to be anything special or anything, just especially now, it's a ghost town over there, look at it, no, nothing happens, it's bad. The next three episodes of JonTron are going to take place at Ego Raptor's house. This is mostly because of Game Grumps, and also to note, there's a big gap in time between videos. I think this is one of the forgotten, most underrated JonTron episodes. And by forgotten, I mean forgotten by John because it isn't on his channel, it's unlisted or privated. So, you can actually watch this from an archive channel? It's a shame, really, this episode's actually great. Why did John take it down? Apparently everyone else in the comments is trying to figure that out as well. I assume it had to do with the changing of the multi-channel networks, like him leaving Maker Studios, but he probably doesn't like this episode, actually. John probably doesn't like it because it isn't good enough in his eyes. I can see why, because the jokes seem kind of contrived, but I think they work. Even though it doesn't have a lot of notable jokes that don't get quoted, I really like the Dragon Force joke. That there is, is Wilfred Brimley impression. My pancreas doesn't work. And it just gets me every time, even though it's just kind of ear rape. So there's that. I think this is one of the most extremely underrated episodes. Just take it from this guy in the comment section. I'm glad this channel exists to preserve videos like this one. In fact, overall, I'm glad channels like this preserve so many deleted reviews, skits, and other pieces of content. I don't know if John took it down himself or was forced by some copyright shtick, but the bottom line is that it is still a piece of art. It's a piece of work that many enjoyed over the years in whatever other circumstances. We, the audience, don't didn't deserve the rug pulled out from under us. I understand there's an argument for things like League and I that John wasn't happy with with the quality, but respectively, the audience were. I loved it, and I know loads of other people did. And if this is a situation like that, though who the heck knows, we know John isn't going to talk, he never does. I just want to say thank you for giving people a place that can still find the content they love. XD. YouTube is the greatest place for discussion. Well, that was a load of shit. I think they used our likenesses. Can we sue? Out the butt. Yeah, we should sue. The last two episodes in this season are actually some of the best in his entire catalog. Nightshade's Clouds of <laughs> I always wanted to do that. Has some of the most beloved jokes in the entire fan base. For God's sake, the crowbar joke completely destroyed the JonTron subreddit. It's it's the reason it's cited as being the weirdest subreddit and honestly one of the worst. I stopped going there, just look at it, it's a dumpster fire. Honestly, this is the start of something different with John Tron and his formula. The jokes are more refined, and there's more live-action moments. Things get weirder with the visual gags as well, it seems. Nightshade's hard to impress. You take him to a history museum, and you're like, look at that giant bronze horse from the early BC times, and he's like, eh, nothing unusual here. You take him to future history museum, and you're like, eh, look at that giant hologram horse from the distant CE time. times, and he's like, Nightshade can't do that. These last episodes seem to indicate a transition in John's style. This episode especially tells the difference by how comedically focused it is. I feel that John hits the proverbial comedic marks when he improvises stuff on camera, seen here. We would be seeing this a lot more with John from this point, especially in the last episode of the season. It actually seems that his content is really refined by long upload periods. That's that's just me though. <laughs> It's for the Super Nintendo! Thank you. In retrospect, this is an amazing ending to the season, and it took months to get here. This is mostly because of Game Grumps, though. Everything feels bigger in this episode, and I don't mean, like, production value. 
I believe this episode marks the standard for editing in John Tron t- we see today. Even looking back, this is probably one of the best edited episodes of the entire series based on its charm alone. You'd walk into an arcade and you'd see something like this, something like this, and then whoa! What's that? The future? Is that Blade Runner? Is that Elijah Wood and Back to the Future 2? <laughs> the dumb visual gags with the text are at their absolute best here. And the cutout hands are absolutely glorious here. I just can't get enough of them. They're hilarious. Also, spacewalking. What was that? Oh, here, oh, here it comes! No, uh, oh, I can't stop it! <laughs> like I said before, I feel like a lot of the jokes are improvised, and it adds a lot to the charm and overall quality. Looking back on older episodes, some jokes are hit and miss because they feel way too calculated and extremely focused. John's charisma seems to carry his comedy, it's not the center of the jokes itself that do it. I mean, think about this for a second. AVGN works because of its ridiculous delivery of extremely scripted and contrived lines, and John was inspired by that, but ultimately changed to fit his comedic vision. This might be the overall point in JonTron's proverbial digi-evolution, where he's the most funny and entertaining. Of course, the older videos have their charm, but this might be the peak of it all. But this is me looking back at it as objectively as possible. I actually don't think this is the best in the entire season. I actually don't think this is the best at all, at least in this season. That's just my opinion. It just set up what JonTron would become in the future here. Adding on to my point about his comedy, looking back on his run on Game Grumps, this all makes sense. John practiced a lot of his improv comedy in Game Grumps, which ultimately translated to his main content. Call him now, call him later. Call him Pharaoh, call him Mark. So. In retrospect, him leaving Game Grumps was probably for the best. The real reason I did this episode is to show that the content creators that evolve not only with the times, but themselves get remembered and immortalized with their entertainment. This season of JonTron is loved because of what it did for internet game reviews and comedy. Do I really need to cite JonTron's influence? I can list so many people who are inspired by him and his content. I'm not gonna do it because I don't want them to cause drama due to current views, unfortunately, so yeah, that's the most I'm gonna say about that. Now, you were probably asking me when I'm gonna review Season 2. I will, but just like JonTron, I will wait six months to upload that video. I'm serious, mark your calendars. April 20th, 420, 2018. You can sue me for a million dollars if I don't. Overall, JonTron is good. The sky is blue, but where's my shoes? I don't I don't know how to end this video. Do you expect the smoking gun from me? Do you expect me to be the, the man of my generation that'll be remembered? I don't have it. I'm not that smart. I'm not the quotable. You watch this video, just 